everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by our own Frank Stanfill, who's here to help us break down the waiver wire as we head into week number 10. What's happening, Frank? Not much, Greg. Doing about as well as a Jets fan can do right now. This is the lowest of the low, but it's a very important waiver wire week. We have six teams on a bye. Some people are calling this by Mageddon, Greg. So let's get to it. Who are some people, Frank? I heard it through the grapevine. Nope. That's not a thing. Let's begin at the quarterback spot, and this week, well, it's a lot of against your New York Jets, and this week they have the battle of the Swamp, the Snoopy Bowl, between the Jets and the Giants, and for that reason, they're all over Daniel Jones. All over Danny Dimes in this matchup against the New York Jets. This is purely a matchup play here as you look at the Jets secondary and what they've allowed over the past two weeks. Gardner Minshew a couple of weeks ago throws for three touchdowns. Ryan Fitzmagic throws for three touchdowns as well. This Jets secondary just got torched by the likes of Devontae Parker and Preston Williams. Fine players, but again, you can have success against this secondary. Daniel Jones has struggled with turnovers so far this season. Some interceptions, holding onto the football when he gets sacked. He, he fumbles the ball a lot as well. Well, the Jets are 29th in, in sacks this year in the NFL. So I think Daniel Jones is going to have some time to throw. He can sit in the pocket. He can also get outside the pocket and make plays with his legs. We've seen him do that so far this season as well. And back in week eight, Daniel Jones reminded us of his upside. He threw for four touchdowns. He finished as the QB1 overall against the Detroit Lions. I think the floor is pretty safe for Daniel Jones. He has at least 31 passing attempts in every game this season. The Giants' defense is not very good as well. So if we do get some back and forth, then that might lead to even more passing for Daniel Jones. I think there's a safe floor, and I think the upside is there based on this Jets secondary. The upside certainly there for Daniel Jones, who's showed a lot of progress here in his rookie season. The best part for fantasy owners, he turns the ball over a lot, and that causes, well, more points on the other side, which means he has to score more points. Danny Dimes against the Jets seems like a solid matchup on a big waiver wire week. But if you don't want to go with Danny Dimes, you're looking for another quarterback option. Well, look at Ryan Tannehill. He's facing off against the Kansas City Chiefs. You know the Kansas City defense will allow a bunch of points. But Ryan Tannehill could be the main beneficiary. Ryan Tannehill has been solid here, Greg, completing nearly 72% of his passes since taking over as the starter for the Tennessee Titans. He has over 300 yards passing in two of the three games that he has started, reminded us of some of the rushing production that he can provide as well. In week nine, he had 38 rushing yards and a rushing touchdown. He's had at least 19 fantasy points in each of the three games that he has started as well. Going up against the Kansas City Chiefs in week 10, this defense, specifically their secondary and their pass defense, has played well so far this season overall over the past two weeks. However, they have allowed three passing touchdowns in each of those games. So I'm looking at a Titans team that is likely playing from behind. It looks like Patrick Mahomes might be ready to play in this game. And if that's the case, then, again, the Titans are likely playing from behind. Tannehill has had some success, can make some plays with his legs. He's throwing for more yards. Uh, and I, I think that with six teams on a bye, obviously, here, you know, we like Daniel Jones as the top ad. But if he is gone, then Ryan Tannehill is the next man up going up against this Chiefs defense. Tannehill's been fine. If you don't have any other choices at the quarterback spot, then it's okay. You can do worse than Tannehill. Going up against a Kansas City team that he's going to need to throw a lot against if the Titans are going to have any chance to defeat. Let's move on to the running back position, Frank, where we've waited a long time to say that Ronald Jones has been freed, but it certainly looks like we finally have established Rojo as the number one option in Tampa Bay. Once again, Ronald Jones has been freed here, Greg, and hopefully this is the last time that we're talking about this because Ronald Jones proved, once again, why he's better than Peyton Barber and really the best running back in this backfield for Tampa Bay. Played a career-high 53% of the snaps in Week 10 for the Tampa Bay Bucks. He handled 18 carries for 67 yards and a touchdown. That represented 78% of the Bucks' running back carries in this game. He also saw two targets, which was more than Dario Gumbawale, who is the pass-catching back on this team, and Peyton Barber combined. The Bucks have... The Bucs face the Cardinals heading into Week 10, and the Cardinals you know, are allowing 4.4 yards per carry to opposing running backs. They are 26th in the NFL in run defense DVOA. The Bucs have been playing with some negative game scripts. They've been playing from behind. That's why we didn't see as much from Ronald Jones, but they are 4.5-point favorites, the early line for this game against the Arizona Cardinals. So Vegas expects them to be playing with a lead. I expect that as well, which means that we should 
once again, see 15-plus carries for Ronald Jones. Let's hope that this is the last time we're talking about this. Some people dropped Ronald Jones because of that lull that he went through. But again, a good matchup, and he's taking over in this backfield. I have a lot of faith in Ronald Jones as one of the better waiver wire pickups this week. Ronald Jones is one of those guys that if he just gets going, he could potentially be a league winner. At least we thought when we drafted him each of the last two seasons. Hopefully this time it's real, Frank, and hopefully this time Rojo is here to stay. Up next is a running back you've been talking to me about for like a month now. And it's Darius Geis of the Washington football team. I do have to throw it out there to you, though. Are you nervous about how effective Adrian Peterson has been that they won't just throw him into the bench? Or does it make you, make you cautiously optimistic about how good Darius Geis will be seeing all the success that a much older AP is having? I think that's actually a really good question. I'm going to go with the latter because this team is 1-8, and eight, and I think that the Washington Redskins have to see what they have in Darius Geis. He is 22 years old. They use a second-round pick on him, and Adrian Peterson is 34. He has played extremely well, as you mentioned, Greg, since Bill Callahan, the interim head coach of Washington, has taken over. AP is averaging 18.8 carries per game and 95.8 rushing yards per game. If you saw any of the highlights from AP this past week against the Buffalo Bills, he still has something left in the tank. I think that that's very obvious. But again, he is 34 years old. Darius Geis, much, much younger. I think that they have to see what they have in him. They already went to Dwayne Haskins. We'll see what they do coming out of the bye. But Darius Geis is eligible to return off the IR after week 11. Washington will be on a bye in week 10. Normally, we don't really like to pick up players that are on a bye. But I think that this is a good stash. We saw in week one earlier this year, albeit it was under Jay Gruden at the time, Darius Geis was the starter in that game, and Adrian Peterson was a healthy scratch. So I am cautiously optimistic that this offensive line has played a little bit better, that Adrian Peterson has been able to run well, and that Bill Callahan wants to run the football. I think that they get Darius Geis involved. We already know, as you said, that Bill Callahan wants to run the football. He's also trying to make a claim at this job next year. Yeah, Adrian Peterson, he's the veteran. He's got the support of the locker room. But Darius Geis is the future. They've already turned the keys over to Dwayne Haskins, and now it's time to see what they have in Darius Geis. Let's move on to the wide receiver position, and that brings us to Indianapolis, where Zach Pascal stepped up without T.Y. Hilton in the lineup. We thought Pascal probably was going to be the guy, and yesterday... He was. Only problem, Frank, is Jacoby Brissett has a sprained MCL, at least, we think. Hasn't been ruled out for Sunday, but it does look like, at least we assume, that Brian Hoyer will be the quarterback. Does that make you a bit concerned for Zach Pascal? No, it doesn't concern me with Zach Pascal because he still led the team with targets with six Led the team with 19% of the target share, 44% of their air yards this past week. Also had 76 yards and a touchdown on five catches. So I'm not really all that worried. They're going to have to throw the ball to somebody. And it seemed like he was the go-to guy even for Brian Hoyer. We saw late last week that T.Y. Hilton was ruled out with that calf injury. He's going to miss the next three to four weeks. But Zach Paschal is still out there in a large majority of leagues, which means that you need to grab him. I actually think that he is the top waiver wire ad this week Overall, he played 94% of the snaps this past week in Week 9. Ran 40 routes, which was most on the team as well. Up next for the Colts, they're going up against the Miami Dolphins. We know Xavier Howard has been placed on IR. They have allowed 14 touchdowns to opposing wide receivers this season. That is the most in the NFL. They've allowed the 7th most fantasy points to opposing wide receivers as well. We saw Jamison Crowder have a big game in Week 9 against this Dolphins secondary. So they need somebody to throw the ball to with T.Y. Hilton banged up. And I think based on Zach Pascal's uh, snaps that he played, how many routes he ran, his target share, his usage, and all that, I'm very excited about him for these next couple of weeks, specifically in Week 10 against the Miami Dolphins. I'm really excited about Zach Pascal stepping up because last time T.Y. Hilton was out, we didn't know what to think, Frank. I, mean, I remember we recommended Deion Kane. Devin Funches was a thing. He's on his way back, too. But it was Zach Pascal that really stepped up, perhaps the name that we weren't expecting all those weeks ago. Now, this time, with T.Y. Hilton out, we ran up and picked up Pascal, and it worked out yesterday. Against Miami, it should work out again. Zach Pascal clearly one of the top waiver wire pickups this week. Another wide receiver worth picking up is Hunter Renfro, who has back-to-back games with the Oakland Raiders, scoring a touchdown for his two of his NFL career. It was a bit of a scramble yesterday for Derek Carr getting the ball to Renfro, but it worked out. Can he make it three in a row, Frank, against the Chargers? 
Yeah, I think so. I like the usage that I've seen from Hunter Renfro over the past couple of weeks. And this guy was in college for about eight years. I guess it's not surprising that he's finally making an impact at the NFL level. I think that he fits into this Oakland Raiders offense, an offense that is playing very well. I think he fits in perfectly because they have that deep threat. They have that red zone guy in Tyrell Williams. They have a do-it-all tight end in Darren Waller. And I think that... Hunter Renfro is very clearly their slot receiver, possession guy. He's got good hands. And right now, Derek Carr is relying on Hunter Renfro over the past two weeks, Greg. As you mentioned, in week eight, four receptions for 88 yards and a touchdown for Renfro. In week nine, six receptions for 54 yards and a touchdown. During that span, 11 targets leads Oakland. 19%, 18% of the target share leads Oakland as well and we have a game on Thursday night football between the Raiders and the Chargers with a 47 and a half total we expect some points in this one the Chargers secondary 24th in pass defense DVOA as well there's six teams on a bye again that's going to be a theme heading into week 10 so we're going to be desperate for some wide receivers based on the way that Hunter Renfro has played and has been used the past couple of weeks I think that he is a viable replacement this week Greg as you said so many teams on by this week it's tough to find a wide receiver to fill these holes on a run from maybe that guy here against the Chargers on Thursday Night Football. Moving on to the tight end position, which has been so, so tough. A couple of weeks back, I picked up Mike Gusecki because why not? It didn't work out. I wish I stuck with that idea because yesterday against the Jets, Gusecki was awesome. And he's really talented out of Penn State. We've been just wanting him to flourish. Well, maybe that flourishing is finally upon us. Do you think he could continue to do what he did yesterday, Frankie? Yeah, I really do, and I'm happy that the Dolphins are finally getting Mike Gusecki involved. He caught all six of his targets in Week 9 against the New York Jets for 95 receiving yards, has played over 60% of the snaps in back-to-back week, weeks. He also ran 33 routes on 46 Ryan Fitzpatrick dropbacks against the New York Jets, and Preston Williams had a big game yesterday, but... He's now dealing with a knee injury. He's going for an MRI, so we'll see what happens with that. That could open up even more opportunity for Mike Gusecki, and it's a plus matchup going up against the Indianapolis Colts. They just allowed a touchdown to Vance McDonald, and they're allowing the seventh most fantasy points to tight ends so far this season. I'm really excited about Gusecki getting involved. Look, they use a second-round pick on this kid, and his workout metrics are insane. He is 96th percentile or better. In the 40-yard dash coming out of college, speed score, burst score, agility score, and catch radius, that all comes according to playerprofiler.com. So the talent is there. The opportunity is starting to come. It's a really good matchup. I think now is the time to grab Mike Gusecki. Mike Gusecki is so, so talented. That Those raw skills, as you said, Frank, they're off the charts. Those metrics are crazy. The problem is the Dolphins don't face the Jets every week, so I don't know how effective Gusecki will be. But in this tight end landscape, we're basically streaming guys each and every week. And this week, why not Mike? Last week, one of the tight ends that you recommended, at least off the air to me, was Jack Doyle. Because the, the amount of snaps he was playing, well, it said that, hey, he could be effective if he finds the end zone. He did find that end zone early on in the Colts' loss uh, in Pittsburgh, and he had a couple of uh, other opportunities later on in the game. But once again, he outsnapped Eric Ebron by a massive amount. And he faces the Dolphins, where Ryan Griffin, the Jets' tight end, had a touchdown called back. Are you going to continue to ride Jack Doyle into Miami? Absolutely, Greg. And you're right. We like Jack Doyle as a stream last week going up against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Came through with some modest production, but he scored a touchdown. Three receptions for 22 yards and that touchdown on four targets in week nine for Jack Doyle going up against the Steelers. And you mentioned how many more snaps he played than Eric Ebron. He played four, 54 snaps. Eric Ebron only played 24 snaps. Jack Doyle also ran 32 routes compared to just 20 for Eric Ebron. I like the matchup going up against the Miami Dolphins. Ryan Griffin yesterday had six catches for 50 yards. Should have had a touchdown as well. Didn't control the ball going down to the ground. Blah, 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 whatever it is. It's a good matchup for Jack Doyle. They need pass catchers outside of Zach Paschal. And I think that he can actually provide that for whoever the quarterback is. Jacoby Brissett or Brian Hoyer. So I like the matchup. I like the usage playing more than Eric Ebron. Give me Doyle going up against the Dolphins. Love the amount of snaps he's playing. We saw Brian Hoyer come into this game and rely on his tight end. Great news for us who are desperate for tight ends. Be riding Jack Doyle against Miami this week. Finally, we get to the defense, and that brings us right where, back where we started. We come full circle here on the hurry-up. Giants and Jets. Last week, we recommended the Jets against the Dolphins. Well, it should have went the other way. So this week, Frank, 
sticking against the Jets, going with the New York Giants defense. Yeah, normally, Greg, we're streaming defenses against the Miami Dolphins, and as crazy as this sounds, I think that the Jets might have replaced the Dolphins as the worst team in the NFL. The offensive line cannot block anybody, and teams are just getting after Sam Darnold. He's making bad decisions. He's throwing off his back foot. He's fumbling. He's throwing interceptions. I understand the Giants don't get a lot of pressure, Greg, but the Jets allow a lot of pressure, even yesterday, against a Miami Dolphins team who does not sack a lot of people. They sacked Darnold three times. He threw an ugly, ugly interception in the red zone. Since he has returned, the team is averaging right around 14 offensive points scored per game as well. So I think the Giants get after it. We get a revenge game from Leonard Williams, of course. I think we get some sacks against the New York Jets, some more bad decision-making from Sam Darnold. You get some turnovers. The Jets have officially replaced the Dolphins as the team you want to stream your defense against. New York Jets and Sam Darnold have struggled this year, early and often. Hopefully this week, it's more of the same. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel. Hurry up, Frank. Best of luck in this Battle of New York. I know we both want our teams to lose for get better draft picks. So, good luck. Good luck to you as well, Greg. I think that the Jets are in a pretty, pretty good spot here to lose against your boy Danny Dimes and the New York Giants. Good luck to everybody else out there. You're going to need some help on the waiver wire. Six teams on a bye. Tomorrow, J.J. Zacharyson will join me as we tell you who to buy and sell as we head into Week 10. For Frank Stample, I'm Greg Sussman. Thanks so much for watching. Enjoy the game tonight. We'll see you back here tomorrow.